Welcome board game soloists. The votes are in and tallied. The list is done. I want to go over every game and quickly give my reasons for choosing them. A silly mistake I made in the last video was mislabeling which games would be new to me and which were returning. It doesn't really impact anything, but I wanted to be to clear that up. You can see here the column A are the games that I chose that are going to be ones that I've played before. And column B are new games that I'm going to learn. And then column C are filler games, which are about 50-50. Anyway, thank you very much to everyone who commented saying what they want to see on the channel in the coming year. It's so helpful. I was really happy to be able to respond to most of you and say that the games that you called out as being most interested in are ones that are indeed making the list. Um, hopefully that means that you'll enjoy the content that's coming this year from this channel. You can see the ones here that I've marked in green. Those are the ones that in the comments were specifically mentioned. So I am noting those to um, take special care to try to make sure that I get them to the table. As far as your votes for a game that is not on the list, what I suspected would happen did happen in that there was no overlap between any of them. So a handful of games got one vote and instead of doing something like putting it in a poll or delaying it with another video, which just seemed like overkill, I just chose. So this process helped me decide two things. One is the game that I chose that was mentioned was Journey, Wrath of Demons. It's a game that for some reason I had not put on the list, but which I have owned for years and do want to see what it's about. Also has really nice hips um, miniatures in them, one of which I even glued together. And I would like to get them out and use them for general use, even if I don't end up loving the game. The second thing is there was a comment about being interested in affordable miniatures agnostic skirmish games and it hit me as being an area where I would like to explore it more in the coming year. You might say to yourself after looking at this list and seeing that I hope to play Doomed, Forbidden Psalm, Last War, Five Leagues, Super Skirmish, Strays, Steampunk Saga, Five Men in Pulp, and Warlord Ascendant how much more time I possibly could give to miniatures agnostic uh, <laughs> skirmish games. But the thing is, is that while I can show you myself playing them and I can do reviews of them, getting in to the point where you can actually play the game yourself can be a little bit intimidating. And I want to show all of you the legwork that I've done, the tools that I've gathered, so that some of that process is easier for you so that it looks more accessible because it's it's not that complex it's just there are a lot of things to think about and once they're kind of all laid out it just makes it easier with inflation and freight costs going out of control especially in our little niche hobby i think that these sorts of games and ones that don't involve miniatures at all are a really viable way to not get priced out of the hobby for a lot of people that's one reason besides the fact that I own them, that I want to include those PDF games where you invest in a PDF and then you have no freight to pay. And some just require, say, dice and pencil, and others require miniatures and terrain, but these are one-time purchases that you can build as you have the money to and then reuse across every game. I mentioned one reason for um, my slowing down on buying games is that I have too many. And it, when you look at my shelves um, and how many of them are in shrink, you will probably agree with me. You probably also think that's a guy with a lot of disposable income. Well, that was true, but it was true when I was working as a programmer. Now I'm self-employed and my disposable income is way down. The good thing is I took that time with more disposable income to build a really what I think is a really good foundational collection of board games that I love and then a bunch that I haven't even played yet. But also there are these rules only games that I buy as PDFs that are going to be an affordable way to play new games in the future. Time 
is the most precious resource, which is one reason why I haven't been able to make as many videos for you guys as I would have liked to by this point. Being self-employed, I can literally be working at any point. <laughs> There's so much to do and every moment is a trade-off. But with this fresh list and all of your um, responses, I am feeling very energized and ready to get to work on a batch of videos for all of you. So before we get into the list, which I described in the last video as one of my best surprise anti-FOMO tools, I want to highlight a channel that is actually another one of my personal anti-FOMO tools and should have way more viewers than it does. Uh, QVO Games. So uh, Juan makes a video every single week of the games that will be hitting retail shelves. Channels like Shelf Clutter and Room and Board do a great service to us by keeping the entire community up to date on Kickstarter games. It's a ton of work, their content isn't evergreen, and because our niche is so small, they don't get the level of success that they deserve. But QVO Games is putting in all that work, is making content that also is not evergreen, and is doing it with none of the Kickstarter hype leading people to his channel. And yet, in his last video, Juan said that people have been asking him to cover Kickstarter games and that that's just not his mission. This guy is a saint. Because of his work, I don't stress about passing Kickstarters by and waiting for their retail release. Because I know I'll eventually see the game in one of his videos, recognize the cover, and remember to look into it again. And he seriously also has one of the smoothest deliveries in the biz. So please go check out QVO Games. I'm putting a link in the description. Okay, okay, okay. So let's quickly go over all 70 games on the list. 50 full games, 18 filler games, quickly. So we're going to look at um, this column first, the returning games. So first up on the list is Apocrypha Adventure Card Game. Talk about this game. It's so much fun. I want to get an actual review of it um, in front of you guys just to increase awareness of the game. Next, Dark Souls, the board game. So I own a bunch of the old stuff and I own one of the sets of new stuff. Some cards got released that let you mix the old stuff into the new stuff. I haven't tried it yet. Got to get those cards printed and get this beauty of a game to the table. Eon's End. I've got too much Eon's End to ignore it for a year, and I always enjoy it. So you're going to get to see me cover a game that uh, has more than enough coverage. Monster Lands. This is a game that does not have enough coverage, that does not have enough people who know about it. It's super fun. Dice placement with great art and usually can be found at a very reasonable price. Uh, I, honestly, I got it for like a ludicrous price. So I want to put that on everybody's radar. Four Against Darkness. I want to show you guys the way that I use the Four Against Darkness cards to play potentially the way that I use the Forgotten Depths game to play, and also maybe diving into um, the new Troublesome Towns expansion. I really should get that printed out and, and get started on, on Troublesome Towns. So Catharsis. I really want to spread the word about this game. It's a Yahtzee-type game. It's a very fun puzzle. It's a very um, cool adventure. Um, you've got all of your heroes that each play very differently, and then you've got adventure decks, usually with a big boss in it, but it's not a boss battler. Like, you're going through an adventure before you finally reach the boss, and uh, not enough people know about it, but they just ran a Kickstarter, and I'm thinking that in their future, they're going to be running more. So, Horizon Spirit Island, like I said in the last video, I um, sold the original Spirit Island. I felt like I wasn't connecting with moving the um, enemies around on the map, just kind of pushing them around. And But I want to try more spirits. I want to try it in this more pared down form factor, even though it's basically the same game, and just try it now that I am a bit more um, 
a lot more of experience of a gamer. Hoplomachus Victorum. Going to get this to the table twice, probably. Going to get it to the table in its current form using the Mercury Boots rule set and print off on, from online, and also you, getting it to the table when the um, expansion that uh, funded not too long ago on GameFound gets to me. Which means I might not get it to the table a second time this year. Um, it, I will if it uh, ships on time. Masters of the Universe, the board game. I'm going to try to play this with my son. Um, I really enjoy this game. It's fun that you can play together against the AI. And to me, that feels like the way to play this game. Great art. For me, great memories. A lot of variability because there are so many heroes and baddies to choose from. And you can play as either side. Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I need to play more of this game anyway but I definitely want to show you guys the really amazing player created uh, expansion and really overhaul that Peter Cooper did. Conflict of Heroes, Awakening the Bear. I wanna get a review of this done for you guys because I think that it is a good entry point into this sort of uh, hex wargaming. It's not that heavy and its AI is excellent. The problem is it is hard to get a hold of, and it is especially hard to get a hold of the um, solo AI, but I still want to show you guys because it's just such a cool game. I'm also going to see if I can work in Conflict of Heroes Guadalcanal using the same solo AI. I haven't played it yet. I have only looked at it, but I think that um, it's possible. It's, a little, it's going to be a little bit harder to use the scenario builder, so maybe I'll just play official scenarios, but we'll see. I'll give it a shot. Imperium Horizons. So this one was um, specifically called out, uh, I think, a couple times for people wanting to see it. So you know that I'm down to get some more of these civilizations to the table. And the fact that every one of them is also available as an opponent. So that's that double value game that I love where you can play as each faction and then play against each faction. So there's 14 factions here. I've got the other two, which each have, um, I think this has 14 factions, and the other two each have um, eight factions, which would mean 870 potential matchups if I'm speaking correctly. Like, this is a lifetime amount of content. <laughs> if I can't get Imperium to the table this year to play it uh, a handful of times, then I probably don't, uh, don't need <laughs> any more than 870 potential matchups in my life. Robinson Crusoe, Adventure on the Cursed Island. So this is another game that I played before, but I played it early in my board game career. And um, it stressed me out. And I had fun, but it stressed me out. And I haven't gotten it to the table since. And I think that I would be less, one, that I would be less stressed out by it. And two, that um, I am better able and more willing to make my own house rules. Now, I, it takes a little bit of board game knowledge to know what to do to really make something work for you. And there are different levels of difficulty that you can do with this. And I'm actually, I only ever played it where it felt like Robinson Crusoe. I never tried like Zombie Apocalypse or some of the other ones. So I do need to get it uh, tried out in a couple different ways. Oath Sworn. Talk about this way too much and to not show it to you guys. And also, I'd like you to see the way that I managed to fit it on a table. So, because some of you expressed a certain amount of disbelief, <laughs> but I can get this on the table. Fallout. Hey, with the new um, series out, now's the time to uh, do a review of this game, which de is, deserves much better than its 6.9, as long as you include the Atomic Bonds expansion, which is their own fault. It's their own fault. You shouldn't have an essential expansion. And I feel like Atomic Bonds is. But I got both of them for $50 if you combine them. Uh, $35 for the base game, $15 for Atomic Bonds. Yeah, $15, I think. So 
that I think is more than reasonable, and I want to show you guys why it is a game worth considering. Dark Venture, Battle of the Ancients, Rob Lemon. I love the art style, and um, I think that more people need to see it. It's got those crazy variable factions. Seventh Continent, it's just been too long since I've played it. It's been so long, and I want to get it to the table. I didn't have any house rules on it last time, and I may house rule it. Um, I, I will house rule it <laughs> uh, when I bring it to the table because I'm not about that board game grind and going over the same stuff multiple times. Five leagues from the Borderlands. Gotta table this one. This game is brilliant. It is the miniatures agnostic skirmish game that is an amazing deep campaign that has you generating your own world for literally the best emergent storytelling that you will find and shows you that buying a rule set only without uh, another $100, $200, $300 worth of uh, duplicate components doesn't have to be a shallow affair. Marvel Zombies, yeah, um, semi-shallow affair, but very fun. And I've tried uh, recording it before and the footage was terrible, so. Sanctum, I just get this game to the table once a year. I love the dice manipulation. It's dice manipulation in the game. I also think that it's a lot more like Diablo but they should than most Diablo-like games, but they should not have sold it like that. And uh, so I want to show it to you guys, give it its fair shot. Okay, so now we're going to go on and look at the games from the learning column. So these are all new, and this is ambitious for me. I get pretty easily intimidated by learning new games, but I I'm ex legitimately like I was feeling a little bit um, not burned out, especially not on making videos, but I just wasn't having the energy to get games to the table. And I realized that it's because my list had basically run down and I feel so energized by all of these options that I'm like super excited. Okay. The Doomed. Um, no tracking, no stacking, skirmish miniatures game set on a re retro futuristic planet. It's a skirmish game that's simple and that has uh, Monster Hunter style stuff going on. Forbidden Psalm. It's that Merc Borg style. I mean, I love it. Um, it's both so dark and yet so tongue in cheek. Um, but it is a miniature skirmish game. Perfect for solo. Forbidden Psalm, The Last War. So Forbidden Psalm, but set in a trench warfare system. Abomination, The Heir of Frankenstein. A Euro that I think could make a list of best horror games if it's as good as people say. I thought that it played solo. This might get knocked off the list if that's true. I really thought it played solo. I'm going to have to look into that. Primal. So this one still has to actually arrive before it makes the list, but um, it's from what I understand, shipping to distribution centers, and looks fantastic. Fields of Normandy 2, Solitaire War Game. I've been wanting to do one of Mike Lambeau's um, game books for a long time. City of Kings. So what I have here is the refreshed edition, because that was important to me. The um, refreshed edition addressed uh, several of the issues that people had with the first printing of City of Kings from a balance standpoint. So I've been really intrigued by this game, but didn't want to deal with those issues. So once I found it on sale with the issues, you know, dealt with to some degree or another, I bet. Street Masters, I love Hong Kong action movies. I'm hoping that this feels like a beat em up plus Hong Kong action movie, plus I hear that they've got sets that match all sorts of different action movies, Rambo, and um, maybe I'll even snag some of the new expansions if it works for me and I get to it soon enough. Unicornus Knights, it's just got, so it's got this princess who's just kind of impetuous, we'll say, just charging along, um, heading straight for her enemy, and you have to keep her alive as one of her advisors who she will not listen to. I just am a little bit worried about getting this board on my to fit my table, but we'll do it and we'll do an unboxing. Almost all of these will get an unboxing, all of them that aren't just, um, you know, game books. So that's a good thing. Uh, Trismegistus, um, yeah, got to get a T, one of these T-series games to the table. I own three and have none on the table. 
Explorers of the North Sea. Looks like a little lighter kind of break from some of the heavier games. Dawn of the Zeds, not a lighter little break. <laughs> but uh, I know that you can add things in as you learn. So um, getting looking forward to getting this tower defense game played and no longer being a coward. Zona, um, along with Fallout and Doomed, we are continuing in that post-apocalyptic vibe. Zia Legends of a Drift system. So uh, it's going to be questionable if I can fit it on my table. So we'll be testing that out. And um, I'm going to have to learn the solo at the same time, which is in a separate expansion. But I'm down for I'm down for it. I heard it's a lot of fun as long as it fits the table. We're good. Shadowscape ranked rated very low. I don't know why I felt the need to search this game out. I like the look of it. I like the grid of cards that makes up uh, your dungeon. I actually don't know if that's a, if that's an image of the setup. I don't think it is. I like. I just like the grid of cards that makes up your dungeon. If it actually lands, then it's a little tiny game that I think could have a lot of replay value. Fantastic Factories, fun with dice is what I've heard. Another one to be unboxed. Dice Hospital, more fun with dice, and another one to be unboxed. Those two are ones that I'll mix in also when I need something, a break from heavier games. I don't think I skew one way or the other. I, I enjoy heavy games. I certainly enjoy learning light games better. <laughs> as far as playing goes, though, I also do really enjoy playing light games and have a lot of heavier games that I enjoy. So I don't think I skew one way or the other, and I think that this list falls in a good at a good point. Super Skirmish Gaming. So this company and this creator... Uh, Scott Pyle has literally, I think, four different games, and I own them all. I think Super Skirmish Gaming was the one that I is kind of considered to be like the game in its highest form, unless you want one like Rangers of Shadow Deep, where it's got missions that you can go through, and then I think it's a it's a different one. It's about twice as long because it holds those quests. Anyway, I'll find the one for the right balance because I got to get my Marvel Zombies and my Marvel United miniatures on the table and show you guys how you can, you know, reuse the stuff from your existing games to have a really satisfying uh, gaming experience while only spending 10 bucks on the rules. Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. So the only issue with this one is I bought it without the minis. The same as I did with Cursed City, the same as I have done with every War um, Games Workshop game because I am cheap and you can literally find these for $30 if as long as you're going to buy a copy that uh, they've sold the minis out of separately and they come from businesses where the other stuff is all still sealed so you're getting a sealed massive crawler for 30 bucks but you do have to do some legwork so at some point will I feel like printing out some standees or some tokens to put in coin capsules that's going to be what determines if that one makes it to the table or gets bumped by another game. Because some of these are going to get bumped. It's just a fact. I've got games coming in. I'm going to see deals. Pirate Republic. So this is supposed to be a lot like um, Mage Knight. But on a board that will easily fit on my table. And with a pirate theme. Which is cool. Because I don't really have um, pirate, too many pirate games. And they do have a um, Pirate Republic set around Africa coming to crowdfunding um, this year. So it'll be good to get this to the to the table. It might be a review that people actually watch. It's crazy. I get uh, 10 to 20 times as many reviews for my listicles as I do for my reviews. So I, get, I guess it would help if I was reviewing things that weren't, you know, five, 10 years old. But this is one that may be relevant. Five Core Pulp Adventure. So by Ivan Sorensen, I really want to, to play a um, pulp uh, miniatures game. And I settled on this one because Ivan Sorensen's awesome. Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I don't know what caused this to visually just click with me, but it has. So I'm excited to get it to the table. Bloodborne, the board game, did not initially hit with me, but Chalice Dungeon mixes it up, and I'm 
and uh, hopefully takes out almost all the narrative because that's actually the part that I had problems with. I just wanted to play the game. I didn't want to go through um, all that narrative. I like how in the Soulsborne uh, games, how especially from from software, it's there's tons of lore that you can get if you want to read the descriptions of items and you can put together the visual clues from the environments, but you don't have to. You can just play through the game. All Bridges Burning, the coin game for the coming year. It's also um, the three, another three faction coin game. Dungeon Degenerates. I like Overland Adventures, and yet I haven't gotten this game to the table. That is a crying shame. I want to scorch everybody's eyeballs out with this one. Six Crowns in Hell. So this is a non-miniatures um, printout kind of solo RPG. I'm excited to try it out because I think it'll be, if it lands, that it has ways to compel everything forward. The Strays. Brett Nugent. It's a shame that I haven't gotten this plate already. I've got the train ready. I've got my little soldiers ready. Let's do this. Warlord Ascendant, Skirmish Miniatures, Agnostic Game, Soloable, Journey Wrath of Demons. So this is the one that I've had on my shelf for forever that I need to get out, get tried, see if it's worth keeping in a collection that already has a, a Zombicide. And it was um, requested. Gaia Project, another game that I was scared of but do want to play. I might, tr I have this um, as an app, won't play on my tablet, but will play on my um, phone. So that is a very small screen for playing a game like this, but I may give it a shot to try to teach myself how to play it before um, learning the board game. That is something that I, I, uh, I do if it's possible. Because the problem, the hard part with board games is that they don't, um, tell you what you can't do. In video games, you are, you run around and you um, have to learn what you can do. Sometimes that's not obvious, especially if there's a tutorial that tells you, but you always know what you can't do because you can't do it. It just doesn't let you do it. So having to know exactly how the world works, like I like playing an app because it doesn't let you do the things that you can't do. <laughs> I like learning from an app because it doesn't let you play the things that you can't do. Then I will switch to the physical game to play games in the evening. And, but sometimes I will play apps if I'm just itching to have a little game experience in the middle of the day. Now we're going to move on to um, my fillers for the year. This list I didn't really limit because I just need to, at a glance, be able to choose a good game. Sometimes I'll forget about a game and just end up sticking to like Regicide and For Northwood if I don't have these reminders. So I'm hoping to get more filler games played because each of these, but one thing that I should tell you is that I'm not using filler here in the way that you might use it to indicate a short game that you're going to play like in, on the same night as longer games with like your board game group. For me, it's a filler because it fills gaps in between putting large games to the table. Like I might want to do an unboxing, but I'm uh, and I need to be at a point where I can record that. But I'm done with the game on my table, and so I'll break out one of these. I might not be in the mood to learn and start a new game, and so I can bust out one of these. And so the for me, what these are are these are games that I can take out, set up, play in one night, and put back away. And so that's my definition of a filler. So let's take a look. Dangerous space just keeps coming in week after week. I haven't been keeping up with it, so I need to get them printed out and have a stack ready to go. Under Falling Skies, this is what, I mean, this is not a filler game in the traditional sense because it is a brain burner, um, but it's quick to set up and put away. Love it. Regicide. This last year I played a handful of times. It made it to the table. Uh, pretty regularly, and um, it's because it's really good. And when I looked into it, what I discovered is that there is a Regicide Legacy coming out um, this year. So I think it's cr coming to crowdfunding. So I will be looking into that. And I signed up for a notification, I think. 
For Northwood, talked about this a bunch, solo trick-taking, easy to set up, very thinky, baseball high highlights. In the review, I had to re-say baseball highlights 2045 so many times, both due to completely flubbing it and just mumbling a bunch of syllables, and also um, due to just like leaving out a word. So anyway, I just did a review of this and it's great. And while it's in my brain, I need to keep getting it to the table. Flip Town, a very fun flip and right, my favorite. Got that cowboy theme, turning machine, pure deduction. Basically feels like program, um, computer programming, the game. Space Marine Adventures, Labyrinth of the Necrons. This game is a really fun little game. Um, and I should get it to the table and I should show it to you guys. I seem like a crazy, oh, so this is one, this is a, I was wrong. This is a games workshop game that I did not buy without minis because this was only like, I bought it for um, $20 or, or a little less when it was on sale. And it's a very small game. It's like one of their uh, games to try to get you hooked, but it does have nice little minis. You don't glue them together. So their heads just fall off, but uh, they're really nice looking. And each character is different and has different abilities. I, I think they represent some different factions. If I remember correctly, Resist, this game sets up, but nobody can say that this game doesn't have some depth to it. Uh, every every decision is agonizing. It's, it's not like, you can see from the weight, it is not a difficult to, at all to play game, but it is a difficult game to play well. Marvel Champions, it's, uh, it's in the background. You can see it lined up there. That's how it manages to be a filler game because I can take my, they still live in the stack and it's taking boop, 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 boop. And there you go. Pocket Paragons, asymmetric fighting game, short little games, hopefully easy to learn and fun. Mons and Mages. So I'm talking about the PNP game, which I think is named the same thing. I'm going to have to look for that because I don't want to record my plays under the wrong thing. Numsters, Numsters, which I hear is the uh, evolution of Food Chain Island, which I do enjoy, and which this game will has cute images that will not disturb my son, because Food Chain Island has images of animals um, gruesomely, in a cartoonish way, devouring each other. So <laughs> I can't leave that one laying out. He's a very tender-hearted young man. Uh, Arden Snow is a game from Micro RPG and. Um, by uh, Noah Patterson, and I want to get that played and hopefully get it on the channel. Ragemore is a game that I have played some, and I like it. I was not as crazy about it as the person whose review that I watched, but I think that uh, I've been actually getting the itch to play it. So, and it's very easy to set up and play, but takes a takes a little bit of time, so it's not insubstantial, even though it's it's light and kind of lucky. Bullet man. Woo. That one, that's a, that's a big old game um, in a smallish box, especially when you've got bullet heart and bullet star together, just so many games. And some of those matchups may be impossible. And some of them will just take you eight times. Like the last time that I had the game on the table cursed, I'll show you guys this game. This is basically um, blackjack but like fantasy style and uh it's fun you play a game in like five minutes or less there's a couple minutes and you lose a lot and it's there's a ton of luck but because it's so fast the designer was saying that he he didn't want to like expand it and make it huge because it's based on he knows that you're going to lose quite a bit and that's okay if you just only took a couple minutes and he's right Marvel United, probably too big to say that I can get it out um, and easily table it with as many boxes of it as I have. But it is a game where I will make that effort um, in order to play with my son, but it's not gonna live on the table necessarily for a week at a time, maybe a day or two. And then along with these, I wanna, of course, I'm gonna be doing my top five lists. I love making lists, you can see that. <laughs> and um, I'm just always thinking about, about these things. And also, um, 
like I said, I want to do that covering how to get into these miniatures agnostics game, these miniature agnostic games, which are typically so expensive to get through Kickstarter and which you probably have all of the stuff that you need to play it if you own a few of them. So that's it. That is what the year is going to look like. Thank you all so much for taking this ride with me. Thank you um, also for comments and suggestions. I always love reading what you all have to say. Also a reminder, since this is a long video, go check out uh, QVO games for real, like stay on top of what's hitting retail. We should be focusing more energy and attention on the great stuff that's out available and reasonably priced rather than on um, Kickstarter. I'm not saying no Kickstarter, but uh, I think that it gets a huge amount of the attention and it's a, it's a, it's an imbalance. Follow QVO, stay up to date on what's happening in, in retail. So that's it from me. Have a great rest of your day and keep gaming solo.